everyone! My name is Sarah Kate and I'm your folk music and art teacher from the Hyman Settlement School and I love to listen to a good story. Now every culture around the world has folk stories that make up the fabric of that region's culture and their people and Appalachia, Eastern Kentucky, right where you and me live, is no different. For generations, folks have passed on stories of their life experiences to others. Stories tell us who we are. Stories tell us where we're from and where we're going. And even though your name and my name may not be in a history book, storytelling helps us create our own history. So, in this lesson, I want to teach you a little bit about Appalachian storytelling. I'm going to sing you an Appalachian story. My friend Adam is going to tell you a story from right around here in Perry County, Kentucky, right here in Eastern Kentucky. And then, me and you together, we're going to write your own story about Thanksgiving. So, I hope you enjoy this lesson. I want to sing you a special kind of song called a ballad. A ballad is a song that tells a story. The name of this ballad is called The Devil's Nine Questions. It's an Appalachian ballad about a devil who finds a young girl and he says, I'm going to steal you away from your family unless you can answer my nine riddles. And riddles is just another word for a puzzle. And so she has to be really smart and really wise to answer all his riddles. So I hope you enjoy this ballad, and I illustrated it with some paper dolls that I made, and I hope you enjoy it. It's called The Devil's Nine Questions. Well, now you must answer my questions, nine. for this week's lesson looks like this. This says, what are you thankful for? 
and I'm making this video during Thanksgiving, but even if it's not during Thanksgiving when you see this, this is still something I want you to do because it's always good to be thankful no matter what time of year. So in each of these hearts, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. I want you to think of six things, six things that you are thankful for. And get out your, your colored pencils or your markers and I want you to draw six things that you are thankful for. Here's what I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for my kitty cat Dolly. I just got her, she's really sweet. I'm thankful for the weather being so nice so I can spend time outside in the woods. Yesterday, I made some brownies and they were really good, so I'm thankful for that. <laughs> I've been playing my guitar a lot recently, I'm thankful for that. All of my family is healthy right now, which I'm very, very thankful for. And finally, I am thankful for you because every week I get to talk to you through these videos. So, I want you to take a moment, think about what you're thankful for, and tell me six things that you're thankful for, and come up with a story for each one. Today's special guest is my good friend from West Virginia, Adam Booth. And Adam Booth is a storyteller and a researcher, and he loves telling stories to little kids just like you. And he has spent a lot of time studying Appalachian storytelling and researching and digging and finding really cool stories. And this is one story that he found from right here in Perry County, Kentucky, in eastern Kentucky, from the Big Leatherwood Creek area. And I think you're really going to enjoy it. Hi, my name is Adam Booth, and I have a story to tell y'all in three, two, once. There were two sisters, and the sisters were very different. One sister was very nice and kind, and the other sister, she was mean. Well, the two sisters noticed that every day at about noon, the same time, a great big butterfly would come flying right past their house. And one day, they decided to see where that butterfly was going. So they followed it over the hills and down through the valleys until it stopped at a crack in the ground. It looked like it was trying to get down into it, but it was too big to fit. Well, the mean sister said, get out of the way. Shoo, I'll go down and see what's down there. And she pushed her way into that crack. Well, the good sister was waiting her turn, and she also squeezed down there too. And on the inside, wow, they couldn't believe it. They weren't in the ground. Well, it didn't look like the ground. They were inside of a great big castle, a castle that was under the earth. They were in an enormous room that had all kinds of fancy clothes hanging up over there and fancy furniture over there to sit in. And right over that way, there was a table filled with an enormous feast of oh, all kinds of good food, and there was even cake. Well, they didn't know which one to go look at first, when all of a sudden, purr, 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 a cat came in and started walking around. Um, purr, this is my castle, and you may stay here as long as you wish and have any of these things, if you can help me solve my problem. I'll be back tonight to tell you more. Well, that night when the cat came back, they watched as it walked around in a circle. And suddenly the clock began to strike. Bong, bong, bong. And the cat's fur <laughs> fell right off of it like it was taken off a coat. And standing there, was a prince. He looked at them and said, Sisters, this is my castle. I'm a prince, but I have a curse placed on me. And the curse makes it so that during the day, I have to look like that cat. But at night, I can look like my true self. My problem is, my princess is missing. She had a very similar curse placed upon her, but she doesn't look like a cat. And every day I go looking for her, and I haven't been able to find her. If you could help me find her, I'll give you all the things I already said, plus another reward. Well, they thought and thought about what that princess could be. Do you have an idea what the princess could be? 
Well, the good girl thought, ah. And so the next day at about noon, she pushed her way through that crack in the earth. And when her head popped out, here came that butterfly. And as it tried to get down into the crack, the good sister said, Come back tonight after you've turned back into the princess and you'll be able to fit. And when she came back that night, she fit right through. And she was reunited with the prince. And because of that, ta-da, the spell was broken. In addition to all the things we've already said, we'll give you another reward from this box here. Now, which one of you is the one who went to speak to the butterfly. You can pick first. And the mean girl said, it was me, it was me. Let me pick first, look out. And she reached in and grabbed a hold of a sewing needle. But she grabbed it so fast, she didn't know there was a little drop of poison on the end. And she pricked herself with it. And she got so sick, she had to go directly back home. And she was so sick, she stayed in bed for a whole year getting better. Now the good sister, she reached in carefully and she took out her reward. It was a little thimble. And when she went to put it in her hand and turned it over, a little piece of gold money fell out. She tried again and clink, another piece of gold money and another and another, clink, clink, clink. And every time she turned that thimble over, another piece of gold would fall right out of it. And you know what? She got to stay in that castle as long as she wanted. She got to have all those fancy things and even the cake. And whenever she needed a little bit of money, she would turn that thimble over and she had it. She had all she needed because she had been very kind. Are you going to sing this song?